Hello everyone, I'm T.A. Barron, and welcome to my writing room. I am happy to read to you from Tree Girl, Chapter 3. Eagle grew stronger by the day. Stronger, but no bigger. He looked more like a shrunken milkweed pod with feathers than any kind of bird. He did grow more adventurous, though. By the time spring's first blossoms appeared and new green needles sprouted on old burl, the sparrow had started to strut along the shelf, the table, or Anna's outstretched arm. He began to whistle and to follow Anna wherever she went, inside or out. But not to fly. His twisted wing hung at his side, a clump of feathers that dragged beside him. Even so, he never missed a chance to attack whatever object, dead or alive, caught his fierce little eye. Bring that back now, eagle, demanded Anna. She was kneeling over the garden that she had, at long last coked fr coaxed from the sandy soil. After three years of collecting seedlings, bulbs, and tubers from the forest edge. That's my only garlic clove. Rotting raven's eagle, I need it for planting. The bird paid no heed. Holding the garlic in his beak, he shook it and dragged it away, just as he would a poisonous snake. He writhed on the sand, kicking ferociously, beating at his foe with his good wing. Sometimes he'd give a savage whistle, barely loud enough to be heard over the tumbling waves of the sea. Anna couldn't help but smile. It's that warrior in you. I, well, all right then. Might I have it after you've killed it? Eagle paused in his scuffle. Without releasing his prey, he turned a yellow eye on the girl. His head bobbed, almost a nod. Good, she replied. I'll tend to these onion bulbs then. Her hand reached up to the basket she'd woven from supple stalks of kelp. She plucked out a tiny green bulb and packed it into the soil. Then, without looking up, she reached for another one. But this time, she felt nothing but air. The basket was gone. She sat erect. Where could it have gone? It had just disappeared, as sure as sea foam. Suddenly, she spied it, resting on a rock at the edge of the forest. Now, that's odd. She glanced over at the fir tree she knew so well, but no, even the long branches of Old Master Burl couldn't reach that far. Strange, and she'd felt only the mildest wind. Puzzled, she stood up and walked over to the basket. Just for good measure, she gave Old Burl a stern glance, but the tree merely shrugged, dropping a cone on the beach. The basket sat alone on the rock, shaded by a young oak tree just starting to leaf out. And none of her supplies had been disturbed. She found all her seeds of carrots, red cabbage, radishes, and cauliflower, plus her root cuttings of seed kale and the rest of her onion bulbs. She cocked her head wondering, and then heard something new. It was a faint rippling sound, almost a laugh and it came from somewhere in the thick tangle of trees beyond the oak. She looked into the forest, but saw nothing strange. Hmm. Probably just a squirrel playing tricks. Shading her head, she fetched the basket and went back to work in the garden. By midday, she had planted everything, including the garlic that had been slaughtered by Eagle. She watched a lone crab scuttle past the garden's edge, then stretched out on the sand her hands behind her head. A salty breeze swept in from the sea. Eagle hopped over and sat in the shade of her leg. She watched the streaming clouds overhead and tried to find shapes, a scallop shell here, a frond of kelp there. And yet the shapes kept stretching themselves into trees. Tall and slender, wispy and full, trees filled the sky just as they filled her thoughts. One tree in particular, growing one place in particular. <sighs> but that was a place she shouldn't go, not even in her mind. 
She sat up. Eagle had fallen fast asleep beside her on the sand, his ragged wings serving as his blanket. Right now, he didn't look much like a warrior. Not at all. If he really could fly, where would he go? And where would she go herself if only she had wings? Her throat swelled. She got up and stepped over to Old Master Burl. The fur's gnarled trunk almost seemed to bend her way in greeting. She breathed in that familiar smell, both tart and sweet. I know where I'd go, she said softly. The high willow. The old fir shuddered with a fresh gust of wind. All right, all right, I know it's far away and dangerous too, but something calls me there, Burl. She dug her big toe into the fallen needles among the roots. I can't explain it. Mayhaps it's just to climb the highest tree around or to get away from here for a while or to find some sign of my real parents, my real mother. She started up. Climbing Burl was never hard, one hand over the next, but this time she felt mainly needles in her face, slowing her down, and sticky sap on her hands, feet, and knees. Before long, though, she reached the top and peered, her eyes wide, beyond the dark layer of the ghouls, beyond the clacks and groans of countless branches at the distant ridge. <sighs> Rotting ravens, no willow, it was completely hidden by mist. Anna stared, hoping to pierce the vapors with her very sight. Whatever the master would say, even if she couldn't see the high willow up close, she had to see it now from afar. She just had to. Yet the more she looked, the more mist gathered. Her eyes watered from so much staring. By the sea and stars, the tree just wouldn't show itself. Finally, dejectedly, she climbed back down. Old Burl's branches seemed to stroke her shoulders, but she hardly felt their touch. On the ground again, she glanced up at the whispering vows. I know, I know, I should think of a song. I, something full of cheer, to sing for Eagle when he wakens. She frowned, for there was no music in her head just the endless slapping of the sea. She turned toward her little garden, then stopped, rooted like a tree herself. Her basket was gone again. She whirled around, scanning the shoreline, the cottage, and the dark edge of the woods. No basket anywhere. Suddenly, she spotted it, right where she had rested on the beach just moments before. She squinted, for there was something even more strange. The basket was standing upside down, balanced on its handle, next to the sleeping bird, and it was shading him from the sun, like a hat held above him. Or, she realized, like something else, a tiny tree sprouting from the sand. Mm -hmm.